And good afternoon, folks. All right, so <laughs> had a little bit of uh, difficulty managing myself today. I did a Twitter space through tweets. <laughs> so I apologize if that was offensive to any of you. But sometimes I just, uh, I can't stand when people try to play physician with me or psychologist. You're, you're not my doctor, so <laughs> I'm not interested in hearing your bullshit. So today, FOMC, and I had some things I shared this morning on tweets, and I had uh, an interest in the 15,442 buy side post 9 a.m. Every time I refer to time, it's New York local time. So I was wanting to see if we could take both sides of the liquidity that I, I framed out today. And we were unwilling to get up to the buy side that I was interested in. But I was giving room for it to do so at 2 o'clock and then 2.30, not knowing what side they were going to run for initially. So uh, we like to look at FOMC when they're doing the rate announcements, that type of thing. Not the minutes. The minutes are not all that terribly important, but sometimes they can surprise and, and provide a little bit of volatility. But whenever there's a rate announcement, whenever they're going to be doing something like we saw today, and I don't even know what they did. I, I don't care to know. I don't, I don't know if anybody can find any value in trying to predict whether they're going to be raising, keeping things unchanged, or lowering interest rates. I think that's pretty much a gamble when people do that. And frankly, they can do something that would otherwise be expected in price action after the, you know, whatever consensus was, you know, if they were going to raise rates, leave them unchanged or lower them, uh, whatever that effect would have on the market, uh, sometimes it can do the opposite or do nothing, right? So uh, I, that's why I don't try to, concern myself with that. When I was a younger man, I, I tried very hard to decipher all that and try to figure out, you know, what the Fed was doing and read all their monetary statements and try to determine hawkish, dovish, all that business. And I never really could figure it out because ultimately they're going to do what they're going to do. And you're not going to be able to be consistent with you know, determining what they're going to do and how the market's going to react to it. Okay. That's that's my consensus on this. So I get a lot of questions as to you know what what do I look for and do I have any kind of insight into what they come out with? I, I don't care. Okay. I, I follow interest rates on a longer term, but you know, about a minute fluctuations or the day of the change or no change at all. Uh, that doesn't really have that much of an impact on me because it's the volatility I'm looking for. I want to see what they run for. And FOMC is a two-stage setup. So I'm looking for you know, how the market behaves at 2 o'clock and then how it behaves at 2.30. So it's with that in mind, I want to talk about this today. And I have about uh, 25 minutes. So I will be here on a time basis today. So it's going to be real short. I'll know I'm done because the stimulator I'm wearing on my back will be off by then. So I'll close when that happens. But if you look at your NASDAQ chart, and you're welcome to do this also when we're done with the ES and Dow futures, it's, it's going to be beneficial for you to do so. But if you pull up a five-minute chart on NQ, on TradingView, NQ, Z is in zipper, 2023, it's a five-minute basis. I'll give you a moment to get that loaded up. <clears throat> I know some of you like to put these on your YouTube channels, but unless you put it with a chart that you're following along with, you really are doing your, your viewers a disservice. <laughs> you're going to make the ad revenue, do the work, earn it. So at 2 o'clock, if you place your cursor or your mouse right underneath 2 o'clock candle in the 5-minute chart of NQZ2023, You'll see the candle at 2 o'clock has a low of 15,286 even. And then at 2 o'clock, what happens? The market rallies. 
and it rallies exactly to a high formed on the 230 candle of 15,392 even. Now, what was that run? That was the first stage, okay? Some of you may have looked at the movement at 155, dropping down to two o'clock, thinking, well, that's the first move. No. No. The rules I gave you for FOMC is what? At two o'clock, that's the fake move. That's the Judas swing. Not every time, not 100% of the time, the majority of the time. So at, at two o'clock, New York local time on FOMC, we have to allow for the market to do what? Whatever the hell it wants to do. Yes, we can have an idea what it could reach for. And in my mind, I was allowing for 15,442. I wanted to see that, maybe even run a little bit higher. I didn't care. I didn't care how far really it went. But if I was going to see a further decline at two o'clock that started at 155, it would have been obviously seen in price. But we're looking at it here. And obviously, you can see I traded with real money today. And I'm going to give you some insights as to what I was using, what I was looking for. That way you can find it in your charts and it's interactive. It's better this way. And it's going to save me the time to do some video tonight, which I don't have the patience for. <laughs> Admittedly, I had a, a little bit of a roller coaster today. So at 2 o'clock, you want to put your cursor or your mouse right on that 5 o'clock. I'm sorry, at 5 minute rather, at 2 o'clock p.m. candle for September 20th, 2023, that low starts that price run up to the 2.30 five-minute candle. And what is it actually doing when it gets up there? It's running out the buy-side liquidity that's just above the 1.20 p.m. five-minute high. So there's buy stops resting just above that. So they ran that level there. It didn't take the 15,442 level that I shared that I was interested in. And I thought they would get smoked. I even mentioned that in the comment section or chat window of Top Spaces live stream this morning. Like I, I felt fairly confident that we would see that two instances this morning. I thought that they would reach for it. They didn't do it. And I thought they would reach for it at two o'clock. They didn't do it. That's fine. I don't care. But when the market broke down at 2.30, it starts to break lower, break lower, break lower. I wanted to see it get below the high that formed at 2.30 that went above the high that was at 155. So on the five-minute candle stick chart at 155 p.m., that high, it was pierced by the 2.30 five minute high or candlestick. See that? Down back into that two o'clock candle, the low, we have that wick, or I guess it would be considered the tail below the closing price. If you look at the midpoint of that or consequent encroachment, it's, it's roughly 15,300. The market traded up in there. It was several candles where it whipped through it a few times. It was on the 255 candlestick and the three o'clock. So both of those candles was whip sawing around in there. What is three o'clock? That's the hour where everything's in motion now. You have the final hour of New York session trading. The damage has been done at FOMC. The first move was the Rally higher. It took what? Buy stops. It broke lower. And now right at 3 o'clock, we're seeing what? It's trading inside of the bearish candle that formed at 2 o'clock inside of its tail or the wick below the closing price, which is a bearish breaker. I don't need, you don't need to see it break away from it 
come back up and retest because I am not what? I'm not a break and retest trader. I've been trying to tell you that for a long time, just like I'm not a supply and demand trader. So my PD arrays, I don't need to see them be treated as a support and resistance. I'm keying off my entries within the context of what these PD arrays should be implying that the market should be doing. The markets have seen the buy stops taken on the high at 155. At 230, it rated them. At 235, it stayed above it a little again uh, one more time, but didn't go as high as the high formed at 230. This is all on a five-minute chart. Then the market broke lower, and we started consolidating inside of the tail of the candlestick at 2 o'clock. Look at the candlestick at 255. You see how we traded up? And it all the way back down again. Next candle, we traded up created a wick and right back down. So there was two little tiny indecisive candles. According to Steve Nielsen, that would be something indecisive or doji. Okay. I'm trying to trade inside of the tail of the two o'clock candle because if this thing's going to rip lower, I might not get that retest that I could add to. If I'm going short, if I want to be short, I may not get the retest of that two o'clock candles low or the consequent encroachment of that tail of that wick on two o'clock candle. So I want to be accumulating my short position while it's in there at the start of what? The last hour of trading at three o'clock. So at 250, the 310, there's a macro. And that 20 minute period, I taught that and I teach you that there's going to be a measure of spooling where price will want to run. It'll be directional, it'll seek liquidity or run for inefficiency. Now, I shared the price run that was measuring the two o'clock five minute low to the 230 high. So if you take your Fibonacci and if you haven't looked at the, the video I shared today, you want to draw your fib between those two points to 2.30 and a 2 o'clock. And your standard deviation should be projecting a negative standard deviation 1, which comes to 15,180. Now, I thought that was pretty, well, low-hanging fruit. I'll show you how I could have got a lower one, but I was not balanced today. I, I, I went off the rails in Twitter, and I, I kind of, Regretted it because I'm not doing a very good job of controlling myself. And that's the wrestling match that I live with every day. But as price broke below the 15,248 and a half level, that's that blue level I showed you on the video, that is the low formed on Tuesday at 10.35 a.m., September 19th, 2023. So if you don't have that on your five-minute chart, just grab the time axis, hold your cursor on it and drag over to the right and you'll see it appear in your chart. That's where that level came from. So I wanted to see it dig underneath that because there would be sell stops below that. So if I'm selling short inside of that bearish breaker that's forming on the two o'clock, 2 p.m., five minute candle, I don't want to miss this move. I am anticipating a drawdown into the very minimum 15,248. I want to see it get down there. It could go lower. I wanted it to go lower, but my mind was not allowing me to focus. I was mad. I was raged. I was enraged. So even though you saw me make $11,000 in this one single trade, I'm not pleased with myself because I did it at a time when I shouldn't. And I teach you not to do this. So that's why I'm talking to you. And if I say it in a manner that's usually delivered in a Twitter space, I'm trying not to use the language that I usually do. I'm trying to come down from it. 
I want you to understand that I don't want you thinking that doing what I said I should not have done, which is turn the charts off, close. that should have been what I stuck with. But I had a bone to pick. I, I just wanted to twist the knife. <laughs> I wanted to get in there and just show these motherfuckers just who the fuck I am. Okay. And I wrestle with this all the time. And when I see these dickheads making their little bullshit videos and they go out there and they start their live streams and they're supposedly up $7,000 that you didn't see them trade. And then when they're live streaming, they blow their ass out in their live stream, just like they did all January, every single time. Back's lost day. That was insane. Yes. You're trying to get a $10,000 day. Motherfucker, I can do $10,000 trades. And when I have people come at me and try to be my physician, on YouTube, I sound like Dr. Jekyll, mild-mannered. On Twitter, when I don't have a fucking filter, I'm Mr. Hyde. I'm not proud of him. I don't. I, this is the part of me I don't want people to know about because it's not very pleasant. I don't want you to learn from this part of me. And just like today, you probably see this. You saw that trade and you're thinking, wow. But you know what I'm telling you? I see. This is what I see. OK. I see the fact that I wanted to see it go to 15,180. But I couldn't focus. I could not focus. I had a thousand things jumping in front of me. I wanted to give this person a piece of my mind. Then I wanted to go down there and apologize to the person. Then I was like, no, I don't want to do that. If I do that, something else is going to be said and I'm going to be even more mad. So that's what it's like to be in my head. There's a thousand different things constantly jumping in the front of the line. So because while I was in that trade, it was very hard for me to dial in on what it is I wanted to do. Multiple models, multiple objectives, targets, and I didn't want to do any partials. So I just used the easiest one, which was the run below 15,248 and a half. And I wanted to see a little bit of expansion below it, and I had it. But just 20 minutes later, it rolled down into the 15,180 level. Now, any other day, I would dismiss it. I would say, it's okay, I'm, it, that's not a big deal. But today, I wrestle with it, just like you're going to wrestle with it. This is what you do in your journal. You do not fill it with, oh, I messed it up. I did something stupid, or I did that. You just tell yourself that I'm glad that the model was calling for 15,180 and lower. And even though I closed early. I closed in profit, and over time, I will be able to trade with a much better focus and hold for those targets. Instead of making $11,000, $23,800 could have been made. So there's no room or invitation for negative. You know it's there. I know it's there. But you can't bring that into your journal. To do that invites toxic thinking, and toxic thinking causes a great deal of problems for your executions, your trade management, uh, the psychology of you as a trader while you're in the trade. And there's a lot of things. Like I wanted to add more, even though I knew it was going to go lower. I wanted to add more, but that rule doesn't apply here. I can't do that. I would be outside of the, the parameters of where I pyramid. And if I would have did it wrong, it would have made my whole evening worse. So you saw this morning, the $7,000 some dollar run. You saw this one here. And it's on a time and a day that I teach you not to do it. And when I see folks, post and they'll say, but you said, right, what I'm willing to do 
is not something I want someone that's brand new to try to do. You don't, you don't know how to navigate this stuff. You don't know how to fix it if you have a problem. If you have drawdown, you don't know how to fix that. And you're probably going to over leverage. Did you see the over leverage today? It wasn't even 10 contracts. There's risk here today. There's a lot of risk here today. And yes, I was listening to Kit's live stream or Twitter space and I heard him going on about somebody sending a, a DM about how somebody traded and they lost money because they looked at something. They heard ICT teaches that FOMC does the Yeah, and it did exactly what I teach. That's why I'm short. <laughs> That's why he saw me doing it. Because it did the first run from 2 o'clock to 2.30 was going where? Up. That's the fake run. And the real run is going to be after 2.30. Which direction is that? The opposite of what 2 o'clock to 2.30 was. That's just the way it is, folks. But I wasn't comfortable taking anything throughout the period of 2.30, 2.35, I didn't trust anything. It wasn't. It didn't give me a, a PV array that I could trust. And it was a lot of up thrusts where it just kept going in there more times than I wanted to see it. Like I wanted to be one time up there, clear the buy side at three, 385. Clear it on one candle and then immediately snap lower. That's what I wanted. But it, it played around in there too long. So... When it does that, I have to let myself sit still. And it was very, very hard today to do that because I wanted to go in with a sledgehammer. Like I wanted to go in there and just smash every fucking thing. And it was hard for me. Every model that I know, every PD array I know, everything that's in my mind kept jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping. I'm like, I don't want that one. And it was all this happening at a time when price is moving around, fluctuating. And second guessing myself because I lost focus. And that's very, very, very common for someone to do that in a market like today. It's very easy to second guess yourself. It's very easy to think you see something or it doesn't look like it's going to really do it. And especially if you have no experience or next to none. And you over leverage, you're trying to do more than is required or necessary at your stage in development. You can harm yourself and blow your account, you know, cause yourself a great deal of trouble and set yourself back a great deal in terms of time and create scar tissue. That mental scar tissue that when you take a loss or you draw down too far or even blow the account or fail your combine. And by the way, my son checked his email. Uh, Top Step has been reaching out to him, but they were all going to spam folder. So um, hopefully once he gets the information to them, they'll be all sorted and he can get his money. But we'll see. The, the direction, like I said, majority of the time, majority of the time is opposite to what 2 o'clock's delivery is to 2.30. Whatever that run is, whatever that run is, you have to prepare yourself for the likelihood that 2.30 to close, it's going to be something different. Look at your chart. I would have loved, <laughs> I would have loved to have a $31,000 day to sit around here and flaunt. But the enemy likes to show up. And even before I got on here, I was buttering a piece of bread that hurt me eat something so yeah, well, you couldn't hear my stomach growling. And the butter bread fell out of my hand. I'm laying on the counter. I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm alive. You just won't let go of me today, will you, Louie? <laughs> so when that happens, you just start praising God. Just praise him because you know, it's meant for you to be upset. It's meant for you to lose control of yourself. And that's exactly when the storm starts and you praise him in that storm. And if you resist the devil, he'll flee. So if you take a look at the price run from... Look at the low, and I'll say this in closing. Look at the low at three. What is that? Three fifteen, three ten on Sunday. Same chart, five minute chart on 
NQ. Okay, see that low right there? That's a little bit lower than the low that's over here at uh, 1235 on Wednesday a.m., 1235 a.m. So we're looking at the low. You're going to draw a FIB anchored from that low up to the high formed at 9, 10 a.m. today. So you're going to take your FIB, draw it down into that low at 3, 10 p.m. on Sunday. And if you have your standard deviations on the FIB, as I teach, and I've shown it many times, if you don't know what that is, somebody I'm sure will show you a screenshot on Twitter. But negative two standard deviation comes in at 15,141 and a half. And while that's not the exact low, it's very, very close. So in my mind, and I, I, I obviously, you know, showing you what I did today, showing you what I've done yesterday and showing you what I've done in the past uh, and how I teach. If I were doing partials, if my mind would have been at ease today, not been tormented, uh, I would have been more inclined to take a partial just below the 15,248 and a half level. I would have taken a partial at 15,180 and I would have tried to get the limit off at 15,143. That's where I would have had my limit order, which would have been one and a half handles above that negative standard deviation of two, negative two. And that would have given me real close to the low, but not the actual low. So I am I am human. I know some of you like to pretend like, you know, in the past, there's no way this guy's real. I'm human and I wrestle with a lot of stuff. And I, I really would greatly appreciate if folks that are trying to be mean well or mean like to help me, telling me don't pay attention to haters. Telling me not to worry about people that troll me, telling me what I should do and how I should think as much as you might think that that might be helpful to me. It really pisses me the fuck off. It really, really sets me off. And I don't like that. I don't like to be mothered. OK, my dad didn't raise me and I don't like to be mothered. And I appreciate and respect the fact that you're trying to do that thing, do it for me. But I don't take it like that. And then when I have someone else try to tell me that being bipolar, I treat it like it's a badge of honor. It's not. I literally wish I didn't have it. I can't stand it. But many times, that's that's the cause for what it is that I do. And it's not an excuse. I'm, I'm not leaning on it as an excuse. It's not a crutch. It is something that I battle with all the time. Even in the videos where you thought I was talking real, real nice on all those YouTube videos, I had episodes in every single one of them that I had to edit out. You're just not used to hearing it. And this is what it's like to live with me. My wife, my children, they've seen this their entire life, where I could be nice and mild-mannered for no reason to swing to the opposite end. And if I have things that's triggering me, it makes it worse. And I can't. Once it starts, I, I can't. I can't pull it back. I can't dial it back, reel it in or whatnot. And, and social media is full of fucking assholes, wannabes, you know, wannabe profitable you know, traders want to be gurus, want to be mentors, want to be replacements for ICT. It's all a fucking joke, okay? And I cannot wait until November because I am leaving this fucking shit and I'm going to be happier for it. Believe me. But just remember, when all these motherfuckers talk their bullshit and they make their little funny fucking videos, talking all this nonsense, they are falling on their fucking face and they still never came in Robbins. And I'm beating your fucking ass with a real account, Vinny. You little bitch. I'm in amp. I'm stomping your fucking ass and you can't do nothing. You can't even come close. You're falling on your fucking face, you fucking hick, racist bitch. Until I talk to you next time, be safe.